Howdy, boys and girls, and welcome back to week eleven of your night of your uh, tw uh, twenty fourteen. What what millennium is this? Twenty fourteen <laughs> college football season, and not coincidentally, uh, week eleven of the Carla and Crappy Show. If you take this um, by uh, what week it actually is on the calendar, not how many shows we've done. Um, <laughs> right. What's to get done to ourselves? Although we're we're back to two weeks in a row, so that that's okay. there's consistency. Hooray us, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. How you doing? Yeah. Um, not too bad. I, I just talking off off air that uh, it's it's kind of a cool, damp, rainy day here in Nashville. So um, have fun with that tomorrow because it's coming your way. Cool, um, cool and damp in Nashville translates to uh, to cold and damp in Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm, that's true. That's I'm true. Thinking. Yeah, the temperature here has at least been tolerable. But man, people, it, it's the same way everywhere, right? You add a little rain into the mix, and people forget how to drive. Ah, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know how this goes. Um, yeah. I, I'm I'm uh. I, I don't know if it, I don't have any idea if it's going to be raining in Fort Worth, Texas, on Saturday. But um, I, it's going to be warmer. I would I would make that bet. That's probably uh, safe. Then it, then it will be either, either in Nashville when Kansas State uh, visits TCU. Uh, Kansas State number nine uh, in your Associated Press poll. Uh, number six TCU. Uh, TCU uh, to carry on the sixes is also a six point favorite at home against the Wildcats. This game. Um, I mean, we're, we're we're getting to the point here. Uh, where you know you do really have to start thinking about um, the, the the playoff and and uh, what these right. games are going to mean and uh, uh, I think it's it's the way things have shaken out. These are the um, this is the class of the Big Twelve, um, and if maybe if we can if we can uh, get over our uh, the thing that we apparently have for the SEC West uh, and get some other other conferences involved in this thing, this this actually uh, this is a game that would. Um, they would have some bearing on what happens at the end of the season. How do you see this one going? Well, this is one of many potential, essential, well, essentially play-in games mm -hmm. right, that are happening this week. First of all, the slate this week is just absolutely incredible. Yes. Um, and I know you probably had a tough time narrowing this down to, to, to three games, but... Um, uh -huh. I mean, it, this is this is one of those weeks that you just kind of park your butt in front of the television and just stay there all day if you can. Unfortunately, though, a lot of these games are at the same time, mm -hmm. which means they get you know get your remote thumb ready. Um, this game, it, it, you're talking AP rankings. They're six and nine. If you're talking playoff rankings, which came out last night, we're recording this on Wednesday. Um, this is actually a six-seven matchup, mm -hmm. um, and it is kind of a knockout game um, between these two teams because we've got three teams in the Big Twelve that. All of them could potentially merge their way in, and you know, when we talk about our affinity for the SEC West, that's going to sort itself out right. um, because there's still a lot of games to be played in the SEC West. We'll talk about that here a little bit later. But um, but in the Big Twelve, um, here's here's the thing: TCU, the rest of their schedule, as long as they don't have like a total mental breakdown, they've played everybody in the Big Twelve right. already. Right. This is the beginning of a brutal stretch for Kansas State. Three out of their last four games are TCU, West Virginia, Baylor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we're going to find out a lot about this Kansas State team. There's been some hesitation as to whether or not, you know, um, this is really the team that we think it is. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I grew in an affinity for for Kansas State when I was covering the Big 12. Their fan base is really awesome. Um, they're a lot of fun. They have a lot of fun. It's hard to root against Bill Snyder. Um, just an all-around good guy and, and one of those like great coaches um, that really kind of makes the game what it is. And he's, he's, 100, to, he's 120 years old. So that was, yeah, something like that. But he's, that not allowed, he's not allowed to wear his windbreaker anymore. Right. Uh, you know, Big 12, let him wear his windbreaker. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Anyhow, um, but what Gary Patterson's got going down at TCU... Um, is it's really fly under the radar a bit. Now, now it was interesting last night on, on the playoff show, and I know this because I had to watch it, um, because the other person that lives here <laughs> who ha happens to cover this still for a living, um, it was interesting on, on that show that, that David Pollock made the, the comment that um, he felt that TCU should be number four as it stands right now mm -hmm. um, over Oregon. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I'm willing to go that far yet, but if they win this game... They're done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Barring a mental letdown, um, Trevon Boykin. I mean, this is remarkable that we're talking Kansas State, TCU, two teams that are expected to be around the middle of the pack, and right. we're not talking about the other game that's happening this week in the Big Twelve, which is Oklahoma Baylor. Right, right. Still a big game, right? But but this is definitely bigger. This has playoff implications. The other one does too, but I I think this is still the bigger game. Um, TCU went to West Virginia last week. We talked about that game. 
Um, we said Morgantown is a tough place to play, especially at night. They found a way to win that game. And, and we should have. And we should have taken the under. And we should have taken the under, right? <laughs> um, who knew that either of those teams could play defense, right? Right. right. <laughs> um, but you know that that's again TCU second week in a row only played one bad quarter of football this entire season in that fourth mm -hmm. quarter against Baylor. Um, Kansas State, I love you. I I've got to go TCU in this one. Playing at home. Last big game of the year. They're motivated. They're going to be under the home crowd. Um, and gosh darn it, tr somebody get Trevon Boykin a ticket to New York for the Heisman ceremony. Yeah, the, after the season that he has had this year, I think he needs to be in consideration. He needs to be in New York. Now we can debate who wins, whatever, later. Um, but I think he's had a, a, a killer season. His stat line is incredible. He's at like 2,800 yards passing or something like that at this point in the season. Um, I mean, nobody predicted this. Nobody saw this coming. TCU was predicted to finish sixth. Mm -hmm. in the Big 12 in the beginning of the season. Um, I think this is just a remarkable run, a great job by Gary Patterson, um, and I I think TCU wins this game and potentially secures its fate into the playoffs. Okay, okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm curious about the timing as we start uh, looking at these games and, and what potentially could happen. Um, and, and, and TCU is in a, it certainly is in a better spot uh, having, you know, assuming... Uh, assuming yeah, they, they they win this game on Saturday, um, and then do what the, it, it appears they should do for the for the rest of the season, um, they had their their misstep early, um, and, and that's that's why Kansas State's in a tough thing. Even even if Kansas State were to win on Saturday, um, the, the the schedule they have remaining a, a stumble late uh, is is just really really bad. Um, that's that's something that's uh, fresh in the minds of the selection committee. Uh, and, and regardless of, of the year that they've had overall, uh, to to do to, to, to stumble in November um, versus stumbling in September uh, is a is a much bigger deal, and uh, that would be much more damaging. I, I don't think actually that's even going to be an issue. Boy, this would this will be a fun game to watch, and this will be one that I pay attention to. Um, and a whole lot of purple on that field. A lot of purple, yeah. Uh, and, and um, but I I think the horn purple, uh, the horny toads uh, is the uh, the pick here. <laughs> Um, uh, Texas Christian is going to win this one at home. Um, we mentioned, I don't, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure we can actually do a college football show of any kind without mentioning the SEC West at least once. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, but, um, but, but, but again, uh, another week, another big game. Um, Alabama, number four, um, in your Associated Press poll, visits uh, LSU, number 14. Uh, Bama is uh, almost a full touchdown, uh, and it's, it's a six and a half point favorite. Um, we know, we we know, we've we've talked about this already a couple weeks ago. Uh, LSU at home, that atmosphere. Um, the, uh -huh. the difference, perhaps, is you're you're talking about a team um, that recently has become accustomed to playing in big games versus a team that suddenly is like, whoa, we are uh, number one, number two, whatever it was in the country. Um, so how, how's this one going to go? Um, well, first of all, you're absolutely right. This and, and, and Bama knows this at this point. I mean, they understand what it's like to play in Death Valley at night. Um, and they've pulled off wins in Death Valley at night. They're one of the few teams that have, have managed to be to go in there and, and beat a Les Miles team um, on the road. I um, It's interesting because this was an LSU team that, how, what, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, we were almost writing off mm -hmm. and wondering if they were going to finish sixth or seventh in the SEC West. Mm -hmm. um, they found a way. You know, they've pulled themselves together. You know, and, and who would have thought that that win over Florida, which, which wasn't pretty, um, but they beat Florida. Florida, and who knew that that was going to kind of, like, put them back into the picture? Right. You know, I mean, just a, a totally random win, and all of a sudden, they're right back into the mix. Um, I, I just, I don't see another repeat of what happened with Ole Miss. I really don't. Um, I, I think LSU had its time in the spotlight. It knocked mm -hmm. off number one. Um, can it do that two times in one season? I'm not convinced they're at that point yet. Um, yes, Alabama is young by Alabama standards, mm -hmm. um, but I, it, it's tough to, to argue against this Alabama team that's playing really, really well right now. So I, I think Alabama wins this game. Um, 
and, and worth noting, we're going to learn a lot about Alabama over the next four weeks as well because they still have to play. They're playing at LSU. They still have to play Mississippi State. They still have to play the Iron Bowl. Um, so we're talking about, you know, are they going to let another team in the SEC West into the playoff? Um, again, this is all going to sort itself out, and that's what they keep saying. Like, Alabama fans, don't panic that you're at number six right now. Mm-hmm. Like, that's not cause for worry because these three teams are going to sort it out on the field, which is okay. a nice thing, I think. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think Alabama wins this game and sets up a huge game next week um, against Mississippi State. Okay. Okay, I, I the, if, if Alabama fans want to go ahead and panic, that'd be fine with me. I don't, I don't really care what the state <laughs> is. Um, I, I don't think they need to panic about this week. Uh, the, the point I was making as I uh, before I, I, I threw this to you was, uh, it, you know, in, in Ole Miss when we, we talked about a, a trip to uh, to Baton Rouge a couple weeks ago, in, in Ole Miss you have a, a team that. Um, Perhaps is not accustomed to the the kind of spotlight that uh, they are under this this season, um, and you you go into LSU and you ha- yeah yeah and you you've got you've got that pressure, um, you know so th- these guys know what LSU at night is like, uh, but but you, you've you've added a whole other level to this. Um, that's not an issue for for Nick Saban. It's not an issue for Alabama. No. Um, and I think that's uh, that's the difference here. The the. What what you come back to is uh, the LSU gets a boost from being at home, um, but but it's still not this is still not a really good LSU team. Um, That's it's true. Not not like uh, not uh, not uh, Tigers teams we've seen recently, um, and I don't think uh, I I don't think this is an LSU team that can keep up with Alabama. So I'm I'm looking for uh, so don't panic. Bama fans, um, I think uh, this this week at least, um, you're you're going to win and uh, it's going to be okay. Um, let's uh, when we talked about Kansas State and TCU, we talked about uh, having your disaster early versus having it late. Um, a, a loss in this in our third and final game to pick isn't isn't necessarily going to be a, a disaster, but it, it, I mean real, realistically, it will it will end uh, whatever chance uh, either one of these teams would have to, to get to the playoff. We are of course talking about um, my Buckeyes visiting East Lansing, Ohio State uh, number thirteen, Michigan State number seven. Uh, Michigan State is a three and a half point favorite. Carla. <laughs> so you throw it to me, right? <laughs> um, as if I, I knew this was coming, right? Um, yeah. You're not gonna like me after this one. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> even though I'm wearing scarlet today, um, uh-huh. you match. That's kind of a nice touch. Um, now I, on the road at East Lansing, we've had this conversation multi mm-hmm. multitude of times. Um, not necessarily with with Ohio State as the opponent, but. Um, it's a you know it's a tough place to play especially at night. Um, it looks like there's potential there maybe a few snowflakes flying just for fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I I have a lot of confidence in this Michigan State team right now. I think they're playing really well. I think um, taking again taking their loss early in the season to an Oregon team that fell apart for a little bit but never completely fell off the bandwagon and has managed to put itself together. That loss continues to look better, mm-hmm. whereas, I'm sorry, your Buckeyes loss continues to look worse every single week. Yes, as with, with Virginia the, Tech is just like, what is going on in yeah. Blacksburg right now? I, I don't know. Um, and it, may, it does kind of make you wonder how the heck they pulled that off, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, it I, I don't know. I, I really still, beginning of the season, I was... Michigan State, this, that was the team I was kind of behind at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's strength against strength again, right? We've got the Ohio State offense that's put up big points over the last couple of weeks against a Michigan State defense that's really good. Um, and I think with a good Michigan State defense and playing at home, I I don't know if they cover, but um, I, th- I, th- I think Sparty wins. I'm okay. sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. I, I don't. Uh, it, it, we're 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 having conversations about the playoff, and and it for because of uh, how bad the uh, the Virginia Tech loss is. I mean, Ohio State has to win this game, and and win it big. Um, and I'm I'm not certain uh, that that's even possible. Um, 
perhaps if you're playing Columbus, but 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 maybe not even then. Uh -huh. it, it, it's interesting. These teams, uh, the the numbers that I did look up for this week, these teams are actually really evenly matched. If you if you're looking at at stats, uh, uh, Ohio State's number four in scoring offense, uh, Michigan State's fifth in the country. Uh -huh. Ohio State's seventeenth in scoring defense. Um, uh, Michigan State is twenty second. So mm, Buckeyes on paper at least are, are a little bit better than. Uh, I I but I I look. At uh, I go back to the Penn State game and and think about what happened with with the Buckeyes when they when they played um, what at that point was the best defense that they'd seen all season. Uh, this one's going to be better, and so you have to figure uh, that's that's going to translate into into uh, some, some more difficulties. Um, you, you you know no one no one's expecting the Buckeyes to score sixty or fifty uh, this week. Um, and, and the same thing works on the other side of the ball. Uh, uh, you've got a, a dynamic quarterback, a very good offense. Uh -huh. um, Ohio State's passing defense is better, um, and, it, and it's gotten better every week. Uh, but it, it's still, I, I, I think, um, especially, you know, we were able to give Penn State some trouble uh, because of Penn State's offensive line and, and getting pressure on, on Hackenberg. I'm not sure that the same thing happens this week. Um, ain't no way I'm picking against Ohio State. However, <laughs> I, would, I mean, I, to, to, to be realistic, uh, that's that is a that is that it would be a, a, a will be a tough win to get to, um, and I and I would not, I would not be surprised with uh, with a, another outcome um, that would be less happy for me. Um, this uh, this struck me uh, again. Um, we're we, we're we're talking about the SEC West and. And and um, my my surprise my surprise question. This isn't so much a pick because there's no real point of of, of trying to prognosticate this game. But on Saturday, Presbyterian College visits Old Miss. Um, <laughs> couldn't find a line on this game. That's not not a surprise to anybody. Uh, <laughs> um, Carla, my this and this is my question. Uh, should should these games exist? Should 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 there be? Um, I'm I'm still I'm still calling them uh, one double A schools. Uh, should yeah. should should one double A schools be playing D one schools uh, it, in this day and age? It's an it's an anomaly in the SEC, right? The way the SEC schedule sits up, and I and and growing up in Big Ten country, when I moved down here and really started looking at SEC schedules, I was like, why? Hmm. At the end of the season in November, does everybody have a cupcake? Right. Like. So Mrs. or Ole Miss is the only one to really have one this week. Mm -hmm. Next week is the week that like everybody else has one. Like nobody plays anybody in the SEC East next or yeah, SEC West next week, or or it might be the week following. I don't know. It's one of those two. Yeah. Yeah. Weeks. Everybody plays cupcakes. Um, I'm not even so much concerned about the timing. Should these should these games be played? Period. Anywhere at any point in the season. I can see them being played very early in the season. Very early in the season, like a week one. Right, mm -hmm. because everybody's kind of got to get you know we, we're not playing each other anymore. We've got to right. play an opponent. Mm -hmm. You do that in basketball, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of you know Division One teams in basketball that play the D two, D three, even NAIA schools right. um, to kind of warm up the season. I don't have a problem with it in week one. I absolutely have a problem with it in week twelve and thirteen, mm -hmm. um, because in the era of the playoff, especially. Strength of schedule, and it, it counted in the BCS a little bit, but I think we're really going to see the way that this committee has worked mm -hmm. and the way that they've penalized Ohio State for a loss against a bad team. Correct. Right? I absolutely think that this needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. That there needs to be, um, after a certain point in the season, these 1AA schools or whatever we're calling them now, mm -hmm. lesser conference opponents even, mm -hmm. um, they shouldn't be allowed to schedule the game that late in the season. And yes, that's me bringing in some a little bit of Big Ten bias. I realize that. But if the Big 12 can figure it out and the and the Big Ten can figure it out, then certainly the SEC can figure it out. Um, just rearrange the schedule. It's not that tough of a of an ask. Um, so no, I I, I this, it's the one thing about the SEC. I love a lot of things about the SEC after moving down here and diving into it. This is this is probably the biggest knock I have against the SEC is that this is absolutely ridiculous and we shouldn't be talking about a former number one in the uh, number one in the country playing Presbyterian in Week Eleven. I'm sorry. Right. right. I I don't. Um, 
I, I would prefer that these games go away altogether. Uh, even even initially in the season, I, I think they're uh, not not to sound snobby about this, but I, there there are plenty of D one schools. I mean, if you, if you want to accomplish um, uh, if you want to accomplish having warm up games, there 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 are lots of ways to do that. Um, there and, and and it doesn't put you in the same kind of no win situation. I think um, uh, partially with Glee. I think back to you know Michigan losing to Appalachian State uh, yeah. a few years ago, um, and and Ohio State's done this as well. Although it's been a while, the, the scheduling games against Youngstown State. There, yeah. that is an absolute no win situation. Um, if you if you win, you know if you win by sixty points. Uh, I don't remember the, the off the top of my head the score of the Ohio State Florida A and M game uh, last season, but it, but it, but a similar thing. Um, yeah. uh, Ohio State scores in the sixties. I don't think Florida A and M scored. Um, you know, if if you win like that, it's like eh, you're supposed to. You're beaten up on on, on a one double A school. If the game is closer than that, or if God forbid you you lose, um, hello Michigan, um, your your season's done. Your season is done. Um, yeah. You know, in 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 you know, Ohio State, there are uh, uh, four different MAC schools plus UC. Um, you 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 can schedule quality games that that, that will be meaningful. Um, and, that, and 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 do that against teams that that may be in a position to push you a little bit. Um, and and maybe coaches don't want to do that, but um, I, I think certainly from a fan standpoint, that's that's. Uh, uh, that's certainly more interesting than than you know a game against Youngstown State. Um, there's nothing to be gained from these uh, nothing to be gained from these games, um, other than a win that, that doesn't really even count against your uh, your season to, to become bowl eligible. Um, that's true. I, I want them to go away. I want them to go away. Um, and, and and this late in the season to, play, to be playing them in November uh, is twice as ridiculous. Um, uh-huh. So there, that's my rant. Yeah. And that's why no, I wanted to ask you about that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, if, if the SEC was a really, really strong basketball conference, then, mm-hmm. okay, so you schedule the cupcake because it's the start of basketball season. Mm-hmm. Um, but, sorry, SEC, you're not a great basketball conference, other than Kentucky, really, <laughs> right? You know? I, mean, well, I, I, mean, I even have less, I have less, less issue with this in basketball. I mean, that, that's that's why there are there are so many more Division One. Basketball programs in there because right. because it, it's it's easier uh, to get on a on a more level footing with with a, with some of the bigger programs. Um, if <laughs> you say you know Robert Morris beating Kentucky. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> Robert Morris beat Kentucky. Um, that that that's that kind of stuff can happen. Uh, you know, could um, maybe a few years ago Robert Morris's football team might have been able to beat Kentucky. The Kentucky's Kentucky. A couple years ago, maybe. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. You know, um, not this year for sure. Oof. But but in general, no, that that's not that's not happening. But but that that can happen in basketball, and I, and I think that's a whole different question. Um, in, in college football, it should not happen, and and I hope uh, we get to the point someday where uh, it does not. It does not. There's there's plenty of other places uh, where the big schools uh, can find good opponents. Um, uh, spend the money that they want to. Um, what what Ohio State does with uh, with uh, playing Mac schools in state and kind of keeping that money in state, I think, is something that's that's uh, admirable, um, and that's and that's the right way to go. Um, that's all we got for this week. Um, we've we've talked about three games plus uh, this this travesty uh, in Oxford, Mississippi, um, <laughs> but there are many 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 more games uh, yes. to, to watch this week, um, say- including including right now. As soon as we get done, I'm going to put on something green and go watch the end of uh, of U Buffalo. On, oh, that's on, right. This is the ES- first. Uh, Maction is back. Maction this week. Two two games run right now, um, and I'm going to go watch. Nice. Uh, Carla, thank you once again. Yep, thank you as always. Stay dry tomorrow. Uh, I will. I will try. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you very much for watching. We will see you back here for week 12 next week. You'll have a good week. Bye.